So Penelope, you studied Nancy Reagan and she, it does occur to me, as you pointed out, she was absolutely pilloried by the media when he was actually yeah. the president. Yeah. And you said that was also the case with Mary Todd Lincoln, which I actually don't. Yeah, there's some parallels because no. I played Mary Todd Lincoln too. And she was vilified. I mean, it, as we all know, you know, President Lincoln, Abe Lincoln was very admired and and beloved and um, and they didn't like Mary. And and I think the same for, for Reagan. I think uh, Ronald Reagan was a very popular, beloved president. Um, I mean, some people obviously didn't like him, but, but as far as Nancy goes, my goodness. I mean, they really attacked her and it started almost right away because she redecorated the White House. And when she said she got there, she said it was in shambles. I mean, the plumbing, the electricity, the the rugs were frayed, the, the furniture, the curtains. And she thought of this, this, she said, this isn't my home, this is the people's home. So she was proud and thought, you know, I want it to look appropriate when we're having people come to visit. And it was actually Mary Todd Lincoln that started the public viewing of the White House. She did the same thing. She redecorated the White House. But I think because it was a civil war and a depression and so on and so forth, I think she was maligned for it. Whereas Nancy raised uh, privately funded money to, it wasn't taxpayer money to redecorate the White House. And then there was the whole, the China controversy where she got all the new red China mm. Mm-hmm. It was because there, when she, I think their first dinner was Margaret Thatcher, and they said, and there was some comment about how there were so many mixed china sets, and it's because there was not a complete set anymore. They'd either been chipped or broken or stolen. You know, people take a little bread plate and put it in their purse and say, "I've got a souvenir." So once again, she said, "We're having politicians and presidents and dignitaries from all over the world. I want to have proper china." So she was. Uh, malign for that as well, and and their fashion. So Mary Todd loved fashion, was getting like the finest silks from France, and having a dressmaker. And they who happened to they started an abolition um, charity together. Um, I, Mary Todd Lincoln was fascinating. We can get into that. All, time. all I can think of is the hair, the and middle the hair, part, and, and the, yeah. Other, like, and she lost three boys, three sons. She had melancholy. She was also, you know, people laughed at her because she had seances. And I think it was her way of dealing with her grief. Yeah. Um, whereas Nancy did astrology. Yeah. And, you know, attempted assassinations. Very similar parallels between those two women. And uh, and Nancy said she cried a lot of the eight years in the White House in oh. her memoir. Oh, no. She, she really felt attacked and didn't know why people disliked her so much. And it's funny, when you look at her, you see this very stoic, regal woman. Yes. And I think, in a, and, and maybe it made her seem cold. And she was very, like, fiercely protective of her husband. Mm-hmm. And I think it just made her maybe not appear warm and fuzzy or, or, or approachable, but I think it was sort of an armor. I think it was a protective shield That's, that she had. That makes perfect sense. But yeah. she needed that strength behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. He needed her strength behind the scenes. And this is what the point I was trying to make before we went to break. You know, Dennis had mentioned, you know, before that he's reading Hillbilly Elegy or recently read it. And I know J.D. Vance a bit, and mm-hmm. I know that Usha, his wife, played and continues to a critical role in his life and his development as a man. Yeah. That she, he told me personally, she she helped show him how to love, mm. how to be in a relationship. Yeah. That's, that's so interesting that you point that out. And because, as I mentioned before, he was really hurt from Reagan was hurt by his first marriage to Jane Wyman. She was a movie star. She wanted him to be a movie star. He started to get more political being Screen Actors Guild president. And she had absolutely zero interest in politics. She hated it. And he really wanted to help. And that was something that he felt very strongly about. And so that was sort of the demise of of their marriage. And so by the time when they got... And he also believed you marry once. And... Um, and I think he just didn't trust that he could find that kind of relationship. And so I, it took him longer. I mean, as I said before, Nancy was quite smitten immediately, but she was really patient with him because I think to trust again and to believe and to believe in a marriage and to believe in a love. And I do think, just like you said um, about J.D. Vance's wife, I think, and that's why he wrote her all these love letters is because I think once he found this and it was real and it was true, mm. 
that I think he just appreciated her so so deeply that he mm -hmm. wanted to prove it to her all the time. And he wrote this book and that's the cover of the book and it's called wow. I Love You, Ronnie. And it's all the love letters he wrote her and notes um, just telling her how he appreciated her. And the fact that, you know, no one, she don't sign up for the job of first lady and, and, and how much he also appreciated her constant support. And you know, that thing with a man behind a woman or behind every great man is a woman, but also you can be, there's a lot of misogyny there as well. Cause I think when there's a woman behind a man, she's manipulative and conniving and devious. And, and I'm sure you've dealt with this in a lot of areas of, of your career, but uh, a man behind a man is a strategist. Mm, right. You know, and I just, and I've, I just feel like they they don't like strong powerful women, and uh, and she wasn't somebody who was seeking power. No, she know? really like we was, saw that in, she, with other first ladies. She, was, she wasn't like that. No, she didn't care about being famous or powerful. I mean, she liked wearing her fancy dresses. Oh, interesting. Just really on a side note, the one person who did all this and redecorated the White House and had great fashion who was beloved was. Jacqueline Kennedy. Yes, that's true. So it's interesting. And look at what happened to Melania. I mean, I'm sensing a pattern here with the Republican first lady. It's, He's it's it is kind of interesting, I have to say. Um, but I I do think that um, you know she she really was she believed in his greater purpose and that he she wanted him to be happy. And there's that scene in the movie where I say or Nancy says. You know, I've had to share you my whole life, but that's what I signed up for. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be happy. And she knew when he he didn't win the second uh, time he ran and he wanted to, she knew he, he wants to run again. Yeah. And I believe in this man and I believe in his greatness. And he even said, and so did Ron Jr. at the memorial, my dad would never have been president of the United States if it wasn't for my mother. I believe that. Yeah. yeah and I think the, she propelled him. Watching the story. And also I think... She was important because he was so sunny and optimistic. Mm, she was the she realist, was the cynic. you yeah. know, like, listen, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. We have a bit of that in this one scene. Before I show it, can you just tell us about the Air Force One shots? Because this is shot on Air Force One. Yeah, we got to shoot uh, at the Reagan Library as well as the Reagan Ranch, which was uh, uh, incredible because, of course, all their furniture hadn't been touched and their clothes in the closet. And um, but going to the Reagan Library was incredible because we we were on the actual plane, Air Force One, that they would fly in. So we're sitting in the chairs and doing these scenes that they were in and walking around. Uh. And and it was it's not a Trump plane. I mean, <laughs> I mean, no this, gold. Is, this is a little plane, you know, so uh, not as big as it used to be. But we were also on Marine One and uh, just to be able to shoot in those places that they actually lived in yeah. and just feeling their spirit and their energy and it, it was pretty phenomenal. It raises um, the stakes for you. It's oh, like, it does. Oh gosh, yeah. you want? I'm sure you want to do. Thank God for the hair and the makeup and the wardrobe because that team, that creative team that we had on on the movie, um, did an amazing, amazing job um, uh, of recreating us to look as close as possible to to these people. Yes, I was saying to Dennis, you totally forget that you're actors Thank embodying you. these parts. You think you're looking at the actual people. I hope so. That's what we hope. Here's yeah. a bit of a scene when Ronald Reagan, Iran-Contra hit, uh, did we trade arms for hostages? And um, he was in danger of being impeached and his wife, Nancy, knew it. Mm -hmm. Watch. Honey, you know Washington, you know the way it works. It's politics, that's what all. are you talking impeachment? No impeachment. Yes, they want to destroy you. They're putting you on trial, removing you from office. This isn't about politics anymore. This is about you. Everything is at stake. One more headline, one more star witness, one more arrest, and they will do it. I have cooperated with them. I appointed a special prosecutor. I've turned over every document I have. What would you have me do? I want you to fight, or this is all over. And he listened to her. Yeah, he did. You know, she she was influential in a lot of ways. I mean, she really pushed for the peace talks as well. And she she was actually, because I read it in her memoir, um, you know, she said, you better go before another another one dies because they kept dying, you know, the, um, the Russian presidents. And so uh, that was a really important for 
really important. That's yeah. portrayed in the movie too. It's like the Russian, they, they keep yes, dying. Which is so funny. Another one. You know how much my family and I love our dogs, right? Yes, even sweet little Strudwick. He's not that little, but he is sweet. I can't imagine life without them. They've got a great life, but some dogs are not so lucky and they need our help. This is why I'm so glad to tell you about Delta Rescue. It is the largest no-kill, care-for-life animal sanctuary in the world. They've rescued thousands of dogs, plus cats and horses too. They provide all of the animals with shelter, safety, and most of all, love. And they've been doing it for more than 45 years now. Delta Rescue relies solely on contributions to stay open, and giving can bring tax benefits to you too. Speak with your estate planner about how you can grow your estate while helping animals in need, and check out the estate planning tab on their website to learn more. We love Thunder and Strudwick, and Delta Rescue helps the pups who need it most and also need love and safety and a home. Visit DeltaRescue.org today to learn more. That's DeltaRescue.org. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.